Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 36 of Goodbye Bullshit, Hello Happiness. Um, just so you know, we are recording this and I'm going to play it back for you guys later. And I am very excited for this episode because I have one of my favorite humans on this show. And yes, as you saw, my doggy made an appearance as well, <laughs> Chewy. <laughs> um, so Samir is one of my favorite people. Um, he was a client of mine and now a friend and is just a very impressive young man. And I asked him to be on this show because I think um, he, not I think, I know he has a great message to share with everyone and um, especially for young people, young men, young boys. Um, I think our world, especially with all the separations, you know, not just with race and everything, but just gender as well, there's a big separation. I work with a lot of my clients um, with this because um, throughout the years, you know, uh, generations, um, men and women have been viewed a certain way and certain way of being and uh, we've carried that forward and what i love about this young man is that he is breaking all those stigmas and um, just to let you know what i'm talking about first of all he is a u.s navy sailor um, and he walked into one of my meetings that we had and there were about five, six females, and here walks Samir, and ready and open to share with everybody, um, and, you know, just came, and these are people that he met for the first time, hugged them, I love you. He is just so open, and he has a great message that he wants to share with people, with everyone, and he wants to spread that love. And um, I'm just so excited and happy to have him. Samir, welcome. And please tell us what bullshit did you ha say goodbye to to become this and break down the stigmas and uh, live the life that you are now? Well, first off, thank you for that incredible introduction. <clears throat> Sorry. That, uh, that really makes me happy. You know, it, uh, it, it definitely... I'm grateful for the relationship that we have. We will have, we be able to, you know, become friends. We will mm -hmm. be able to learn and grow from each other. And that uh, I'm grateful to be on this podcast too, because I've been paying attention. These episodes are great. So thank you for that opportunity. But to answer your question, what I had to do to what to let the bullshit go away is um, most importantly in the most broad way is just to get out of my own way. Because oftentimes, you know, you know the saying, you're your, you're your best friend and your best enemy. Sometimes the enemy wins that battle and you have to kind of take a step back and, and take inventory and be, to be introspective and look at why the enemy is winning. So once I, once I kind of got out of my own way in, in many, many ways, I should start, I started to rebuild that relationship I had with myself and it was a better relationship with myself. I told myself, kept reinforcing positive ideas. I deserve better. I am better. Um, the world deserves me at my best. So the, just repeating those things is kind of like, you know, I was just rewiring my brain to believe those things and it happened and, and it's, it, and the end result made me be in a better place. I started taking myself, taking better care of myself physically, mentally. I've been, I took the breaks from work and, and I just did the work, you know, I just did, simply put, I did the work and, and, um, God will, God willing, I'm in a, a much better place today. Um, beautifully said, and I'm going to interject though, is that you did the work and that's where you finished. You did the work. You were willing to sit with it because the word saying I I am deserving or the world deserves my best, if you don't 
really start believing it inside and if they're just words you're saying it doesn't it, it still doesn't work it still doesn't mesh mm -hmm. together and i think um for you and everyone else out there you did the work right. to actually when you're saying those words you're believing it or feeling it in your heart and in your body and that's the because a lot of times there are all these affirmations out there they're positive um reinforcements that people want to keep saying those things and i know i've had clients that you know oh i listen to this i keep saying it but it's not working things are not shifting right and you said again going back to what you said at the beginning too you got out of your way and to me and i like for you to explain that to me that meant you actually made made and are making peace with yourself and letting go of those parts that no longer are in alignment uh, with you and who you want to be. Um, exactly. Yes, yes, I, I completely agree. And um, yeah, to, to kind of reiterate that, getting out of your own way, there's oftentimes, it's, and it, it's not, a lot of times it's not even conscious. Like mm -hmm. we, we build these subconscious barriers for ourselves, right? And um, they may stem from childhood. They may stem from a traumatic experience that you're trying to suppress. And and then um, instead of you know addressing it right then and there, it's like a, it's like a little <clears throat> it's like a little monster. While the monster is little, and just saying, hey, um, what's wrong here? And addressing it right then and there and fixing it, it grows over years. It compounds. Mm -hmm. It gets bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger. And then it becomes heavy and it becomes scary, and you don't recognize who you are anymore. And then, then you have to to really go deep. You mm -hmm. got to go deep and and find what. Why am I in my own way? And then once you find it, it's scary because the monster became bigger, but. And this, at the same time, and with, this is what you've taught me, you have to embrace it. You have to embrace it and you have to allow it to soften and to be, come to at ease. And then little by little, it won't happen right away, but little by little, you're starting to coexist with that so-called monster. And, and it's not a monster anymore. You, you guys are, you guys have an understanding and and I feel like at, from that point now you're back into the driver's seat of your life. At that point, you could, you want to do this, you'll do it. You want to do that, you'll do it. And and you you'll just you'll you'll have you'll raise your frequency, you'll re, you'll raise your vibration, and the, everything that you want that wanted in your life will will become attracted to you. It'll happen miraculously. And that's how I feel about getting out of your own way. Beautifully said. I like that analogy that it's a little monster at the beginning and over the years it truly becomes and you do, don't recognize yourself, your true right. self anyway, because you have let that part of you be in the driver's seat. And, um, and again, I love that. Yes, when you sort of accept that part and embrace it and bring it in, um, and you take charge and sort of like make peace with this part, it does. And again, key point that I, that you brought up too, it takes time. People think it's yeah. like overnight. I get so many people call me like it's an emergency. Like I need to come, you know, it's a new client too. It's not like a, yeah. it, it, I need to come right away. Can you see me like tomorrow? And I, in my head, I'm like, you do know these things don't take like over. It's not a pill that I'm going to give you. And it's like, boom, it's all gone. It takes right. time. And yes. um, that's the key that you also said. And what I took from all of that as well, it's acceptance and it's also forgiveness. Right. And I know you did this. You yes. forgiving yourself and mm -hmm. forgiving others. It's a big key. And it's easier to forgive others. Forgiving yourself is the main part that when you mm -hmm. do that, things that peace comes, that acceptance comes, all of that comes. And then 
things starts to shift and move. Right, exactly, exactly. And and um, I'd like to add to that to that uh, what you just said. We we are living in a culture right now where basically we we are giving express everything. We have Amazon Express shipping. We have well, hungry Uber Eats, DoorDash, right to your door. There's certain things that won't happen express. Like like fixing yourself and dropping the bullshit is not express. So it's it's something that is going. My, it's there's no specific time frame for everybody's different, but if it's worth it and it's worth the wait. So mm -hmm. I, anybody listening to this, I encourage you just to be patient with yourself and and, and uh, enjoy the journey of getting back up. I love that. It's not express. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. <laughs> that yes. It's not express. It's not fast. <laughs> we take pride in being slow. Yes. <laughs> and delivering slow it slow. Slow and steady. Exactly. The turtle yeah. wins here, not the hare. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I love that. And um, you are right. If I can get people to just embrace the journey you covered this the journey is really beautiful if anybody uh, comes and tells me like you know would you have done it any different if i could take you from point a to point b just like that would you do it i'm like no just that journey just yesterday was it yesterday no friday i had a client in the um, morning my first session and as i was working with her she was having this like um physical release as well and her body started vibrating and shaking and i was just having such a great time and when she left um she was like oh that was just so awesome and we were talking i said you know i envy you at this moment she's like why i said you know i used to have those shifts that my body would just vibrate and i couldn't you know uncontrollable and i miss that i and mm -hmm. that's it it's the journey every part of that journey was just so delicious that healing that whole process yeah. i learned so much so right I appreciate that you said that. How do you feel like, you know, if I tell you, hey, Samir, you know, if I could do it like this, are you going to want it like this? Or did you want the journey the way it was? Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like the concept of working for something and then getting the, the, the end result is just more fulfilling, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then that goes with everything. This could be your healing journey. This could be working out mm -hmm. like for your fitness journey. You know, you got a lot of people want instant results. And it just does not work that way. So you might as well have fun with the process. Pick what working out style you like the best. Master, you know, perfect the craft. Don't you don't have to be a master, but have fun with it. You know, there's there's several options and paths and roads to take you to the end result. So you know, some you got to stop and smell the roses sometimes along the way, and and be present in that in those moments. And have most importantly, when you have fun with something it just makes the experience that much better you know you, you could you could shift the the pressure and the stress of attaining that end result into fun and play and you probably will get more results with the fun and the play yes i like that as well i want to get a little bit into how i introduced you in the text portion of this you know we said you are first of all again he is a navy sailor uh, loves basketball. He is really into working out and being fit and fitness. Um, I don't know if your account is public, your Instagram, uh, but you know, follow him and you'll see him working out. But um, the other two points was that the conscious universal advocate and that you want to spread love, the message of love. Um, so tell us a little bit more about that what do you right. intend what do you mean by that so the way i see things now i'm 27 years old I, so I've, I've had a lot of time to you know to think and by conscious universal advocate i, I truly believe all of us are intertwined you know we're one big family and um the 
everybody's path to let's I don't like labels, consciousness, right? I don't want to use a label. I don't want to describe or put define, put any barriers on what that means. But it's reaching a certain level of awareness when you realize that we're all connected and we could help each other raise up. So collective consciousness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just doing your part, you know, just trying to maintain a high frequency and, and um, re- creating a chain effect for others because the world need is in desperation of love right now where there's a lot of suffering there's a lot of deliberate division there's a lot of you know low vibra- vibrational states like fear um anger resentment guilt shame jealousy those are all on the lower spectrum so if you if we do our part to all try to our best to raise those up and you know replace those those uh words with you know love or or um compassion or empathy or or just uh joy you know when you when you consistently are in those states it's kind of like as crazy as it sounds people around you are going to become like that too so i i feel i i just feel like if we all are aware of this and it's it's very true I, I i don't know if you guys know this but a lot there's a lot more rates of depression there's a lot more rates of suicide mm-hmm. there's a lot more rates of drug overdoses mm-hmm. now more than ever and i just feel like I, you you catch yourself thinking like all right how what's my part in this how could i help and if something's just as simple as just you know being happy and bringing joy into a room could change somebody's day and then they could you know try to try to learn about more about their journey and they do the same and then it just becomes a domino effect and a domino effect and then the next thing you know it there's a big group of people wishing and praying and and then putting love into the world and you know we could probably turn this thing around so that's what i mean about that i cannot even add anything else that was just perfect <laughs> Exactly. I, um, I love the fact that you are willing, because I've seen this, uh, you've done it, that you walk into a room and your willingness and your openness to just talk to anybody and listen and be there for them. And again, Nobody understands the power of a hug, just that right. genuine hug. Right. And the, the fact that staying present for someone else, you don't need to be part of their story, just your presence and willingness to be open and listen, that by itself is powerful. And if you one of the things I tell my clients that when they walk in, expect the change in your family and the people around you, because as you're changing, as you're shifting, like you said, your vibration goes higher. You take the people around you higher. And I think people want, I get this a lot that, you know, shouldn't I be connected, you know, to the suffering out there? And my answer is always no. Not like that. The way you already know what's happening out there. There, there isn't a, nothing is hidden. You, you know mm-hmm. the suffering that's out there. The way to help that suffering now is by us, as you said, shifting your vibration, getting into that place of love, compassion. Right. And um, I think the, everybody says like the opposite of love is hate. I think the opposite of love is fear because it's fear that brings out all those separations that you were talking about earlier, whether it's race, whether it's gender, um, geographic, all that stems from a place of fear. And I think you have done this within you, um, somehow like release that fear that is allowing you to be open like this to be able to walk into a room and share that joy share that love 
and not worry about like who's there, who's not there, what's the age of the people in there, what's their gender, what's their race. Mm -hmm. You show up as you open without those fears or as you've really, how about we say this, you've released many of those fears that has yeah. allowed you to do this. Um, right. Yeah, and, and uh, I'd like to add too, j because I'm this way, and then this is gonna tie into the stigma of men, you know, um, not necessarily being open and expressive about their feelings. I still abide by the rules and excuse my language, do no harm, take mm -hmm. no shit. Mm -hmm. So I, as, much, as loving as I am, I will do not tolerate bullshit and I do not tolerate certain things that do not align with my values. And, um, you know, I embrace my masculine and I embrace my emotions and it's, it's perfectly okay to be a man to do these things. You know, you can handle your business, you could exercise, you could remain strong, you could be prepared for danger. You could be, mm -hmm. you know, practice martial arts, you could work out, you could play sports and then you could also go give somebody a hug because they need a hug. So these things, there's, there needs to be an end and some people need to speak about this more. Um, being a man and uh, doesn't mean you have to just bottle all your emotions in because again, majority of rates of suicide are, are in men because mm -hmm. they feel like they can't talk to nobody and nobody, they, they always have to be the strong one. They can't cry. They can't, they got to provide. They have to be tough guy all the time, but you just doing yourself a disservice because once you literally, you just got to go through life and, and take things as they are. And, and if you got to cry, cry, if you got to scream, scream, but do, you know, play, go, go as the, what I'm trying to say basically is don't allow stigmas or, or, uh, how you were raised in certain social groups and, and um, high school, middle mm -hmm. school, college, kind of dictate your definition of what it is to be a man, because that's, that's not true. And you'll, you'll find out on your own that it's not true. And, and don't be afraid to step into those shoes and, and um, take accountability and practice emotional intelligence. You all heard it out there. <laughs> I, I'm you. looking forward to really just young men out there, men in general, uh, females, men, everybody. This is a message for everyone, really. Um, you lose sight that we all, no matter what physical gender, like your body gender you were born in, we all have the female and the male in us. This right. left and right side is divided and one side is our female side one side is the male side everybody has this and finding that balance in between the warrior side the protector the provider and the one that's compassionate nurturing and um sort of the supportive you know bring it together like that um and I think that's what you have done really beautifully is the balance of those two sides within yourself. And again, for females and males, you know, being loving and kind, like uh, Samir just pointed out, does not mean that you're weak and does not mean that if I'm loving, I'm going to let you do whatever you want to me. It means that I love myself, I stand in myself, my truth, and I love what you said, I'm not gonna take bullshit. Yeah. And um, I'm not gonna let you bullshit yourself, I'm not gonna let you take, I'm not gonna take your bullshit either. Exactly. And um, it's, a, it's a good message, I like that, I like that. Thank you, thank you. Um, anything else you wanna share, messages, anything you have to share with, um, especially young men, young um, kids out there, um, what's the best way you think people can start on their journey? Um, I know starting is just start anywhere, 
but anything mm -hmm. else you can any guidance advice you can give people because right now honestly to the other part of um, why I wanted you to talk about these things is um, I get a lot of parents of you know um, teenagers uh, kids like that are 19 and 20 and their parents are like please you know can you talk to my kid can they come to you for healing sessions because of all those things you said they're suffering there's like so much they're all on meds there there's like there's so many issues depression all those things and um you know if you have if you were to talk to those young people that hopefully will be listening to this that they're suffering and what would you say to them to start their change start their process well, the first thing I'd say is, t is um, take it easy on yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. I know you are in a place where you feel like see, something is wrong with you and it can't be fixed and you're stuck. This too shall pass. It's going to pass. This, this is storm. It's going to pass. The first thing that you can do that would give you immediate, you know, relief or, or uh, it will help you is to move your body movement i feel like movement mm -hmm. is medicine so if uh we're in all the culture where we're behind the screens all the time we're on our phone we're playing video games uh we, we'd rather be in a virtual life um i feel like you got to get up and move your body even if it's nothing too too like intermediate get up shake go out for a walk get some good air move so the, the as soon as you move your body is like okay i'm alive all right I'm, I'm breathing in um i'm getting blood flow going to my brain you, you, you you'll get random thoughts you'll get positive ideas if you just go outside for a walk mm -hmm. right and um eventually i'd encourage you to graduate that movement into any type of physical activity whether it be sports whether it be lifting whether it be swimming whatever you're into have a create a, a habit or a hobby of moving and you're going to create those endorphins those chemicals in your brain that are like happy hormones you're gonna you know you can transmute whatever's going on into a happier feeling even if it's for a little bit amount of time it's still it's sparking something and then it becomes a habit and then now you realize okay I, this is necessary to to uh to sustain life and to be happy and um it, it also t ties into the idea uh i was when i in my younger years you know i i drank a lot i, I partied i i smoked a lot um and then now at 27 i'm realizing like it's okay to do these things in moderation but like we we only get one body you know i'm thinking about this thing like we get one body so it's it only makes sense to take care of it as best as we can. So, you know, be conscious of what you put into it. You know, be conscious of what you eat, what you drink. If you, you feel digested and bloated, fat, maybe fast, um, you know, take care. This is our, our one body. We might as well do our best in our ability to take care of it. And, and that, and also in turn, is going to lead to, you know, a, a happier, existence i feel like because everything ties together the physical the mental mm -hmm. and the spiritual so if you if you um you know take initiative to take care of that that body that you get it's gonna pay you back and be happy and give you the, all the happy hormones that you need to to get yourself out of the funk so that's what i'd say 100 percent agree that movement is the key to connecting because once you connect to the body things start to feel better um that right. part of it is you're right we get wrapped up in here and you disconnect from the rest of the body and um movement can be anything like you said go for a walk get up shake um you know tap your body jumping jacks uh dance you dance, know put in music dance. and dance it just makes you laugh get happy go crazy do crazy yeah. moves 
Um, I try to embarrass my son as much as I can. <laughs> and I put the music and I do my silly moves and, you That's know, right. makes him laugh. Actually, sometimes he's in a funky mood and I just like get up and do my crazy dances and, you know, he just can't help and just, you know, makes him laugh. And then yeah. that's it. The mood shifts. Right. So right. And beautiful message. I want to add one more thing, mm -hmm. too. Don't, don't, don't ever feel like you're too mature to play like a kid. You could always be childlike, you know, that no matter what age you are, because you got to keep that little, that, that childlike spark, the curiosity, the fun, you got to keep that. And then that's, that's also just going to help you lighten up a little bit and not take things so serious all the time. Yeah. You can take things serious in certain situations, but just sometimes just be a goof. Goof, I like that. We are going to end like that. Everybody today, as you're listening to this, whenever you listen to this, get up, move, and be a goofball. That's, <laughs> That's it. the message. That's it. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you, Samir, for no problem, really, no I love this show. You know I love you. It's, it's always awesome talking to you and hanging out with you. Everybody out there, Thank you for joining us. If you want to reach Samir for anything, um, he's tagged on uh, the video. Contact me uh, and I can give you uh, his Instagram. So if you wanted to get in touch with him, uh, thank you all for your love, for your support. Love you and have a beautiful, blessed day. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Tusa, for having me. Take care. Bye. Stay on. I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> Okie doke.